Let's be honest, when you hear the words bone marrow donation, what's the first thing that pops into your head? For a lot of us, it's something, well, something pretty intimidating, right? Maybe even a little scary. Yeah, your mind probably jumps straight to a big, painful surgery. It's a super common fear, and honestly, it's probably the biggest reason people just shy away from the whole idea. But is that picture we have in our heads even close to the truth? So today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull apart the fear from the actual facts. And to help us do that, we're not just guessing, we're turning to a real expert, a top physician in this very field. Let's meet our guide, Dr. Anshul Gupta. This isn't just someone who's read about it. He's a clinical hematologist and a bone marrow transplant physician. He's done over 500 of these transplants. So yeah, if anyone knows what really goes on, it's him. We are in seriously good hands here. Okay, so let's jump right in and tackle that huge misconception head on. But first, we need to get on the same page about what we're even talking about. So what exactly is bone marrow? Well, Dr. Gupta puts it really simply. Just picture this spongy tissue tucked away inside your bigger bones, like your hips and legs. It's basically your body's own little blood factory, working 24 seven to create all the blood cells that you need to live. It's kind of a big deal. All right, so before a single thing can happen, there's a huge critical first step. You've got to find the perfect match for the patient. And this, this is where things get super interesting and often misunderstood. Okay, this is a big one. You know your blood type, right? A, B, O, whatever it is. Well, for a bone marrow transplant, you can pretty much forget about that. The thing that actually matters is something called HLA typing. The best way to think of it is like a unique genetic fingerprint for your tissue. It's so specific, you could have the exact same blood type as your brother or sister and still not be a perfect HLA match. Wild, right? Because it's so specific, the search for a donor follows a very clear order of operations. First up, they look for a fully HLA-matched sibling or another close relative. That's the ideal. If that's a no-go, they move to step two, searching a huge registry of unrelated donors. And if that still doesn't work out, there's even a third option, a half-match or haplo transplant, which often comes from a parent or a child. Okay, let's get to it, the main event, the part that probably causes the most anxiety for people, the actual donation procedure itself. And I promise you, this is where that whole scary myth just completely falls apart. So the official medical term is a bone marrow harvest. Now I know that sounds a little intense, but let's ignore the name for a second and just break down what really happens step by step. Okay, so the donor goes into an operating theater and here is the absolute key. They're given deep sedation and pain meds. The goal is to make sure they are completely 100% comfortable and feel absolutely nothing. Then the doctor uses a special needle to collect the marrow from the back of the pelvic bone, you know, the hip area. They take just a tiny bit from a few different spots until they have about 150 to 200 milliliters. That's less than a can of soda. So how long does this supposed major surgery actually take? Well, look at that. The whole thing is done in just an hour and a half to two hours. You could watch a movie and it would be over before the credits roll. It's that quick. And let's just hammer this point home because it's the most important one. This is a direct quote from Dr. Gupta. The number one priority above all else is making sure the donor is comfortable. The whole process is designed from start to finish to be completely, totally pain-free. Okay. So the procedure itself is quick and painless. I get it. But you're probably thinking, what about after? What are the risks? What's recovery really like? Let's talk about the safety record because this is just incredible. We're talking millions of these procedures performed all over the world. And in all those millions of cases, there have been no significant short-term or long-term complications reported for donors. It's just an unbelievably safe procedure. So what does life look like after you donate? Well, basically, as soon as that sedation wears off, you're back to your normal self. You can walk around, no problem. Most people are back at work the very next day. And get this, Dr. Gupta says the area is so well anesthetized that a lot of his donors can't even point to the exact spot where the collection happened. That's how little you feel. So let's just pull all of this together. We started with this big common fear, right? And now, after hearing the facts straight from an expert, we can finally see the simple, straightforward reality. Let's put it side by side. The myth is this major, painful surgery with a long, brutal recovery. But the reality, it's a two-hour, 
totally pain-free procedure, it's extremely safe, and you're back to your normal life the very next day. I mean, the difference between the two is just night and day. You know, if you're gonna remember one thing from all this, let it be this amazing analogy from Dr. Gupta. He says the best way to think about it is not as a surgery at all. Instead, think of it as a specialized blood donation. That's it. It's just one that happens to be done in an operating room with sedation for one simple reason, to make absolutely sure the donor is comfortable and feels nothing. And that really brings us to the final thought here. Once you strip away all the fear, all the myths, and you're left with this simple, safe reality, it leaves you with a pretty powerful question, doesn't it? Knowing just how straightforward this is, could this simple act really be the one that saves someone's life?